So this is Steven Chin doing interviews at the Ordev conference. And I have with me Michael Heinrichs. Welcome, Michael. Hi. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me here. And we've, we've known each other for a long time since you were working on the, the JavaFX team, but you've got lots of new stuff you're working on now. Right, yeah. So I left the JavaFX. Okay. I left the JavaFX team about two years ago and did a bunch of other stuff, but now I'm actually back into UI development at Canoe because I figured that's what my, where my passion is and what I want to do. Cool. So what sort of technologies and stuff have you been working with recently? Um, so I've developed a scripting engine for um, CoffeeScript so that now you can run CoffeeScript on top of the Java VM. Um, so it takes a coffee script, compiles it to JavaScript, and then runs that on top of Nashorn. Cool. And all right, sounds like you have a demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so, have something to show. Sure. Why don't I switch to your desktop, and you can give us give us a look at what you've been working on. Okay. So here we can see now um, a simple Hello World script. Um, the scripting engine works. You, uh, it implements Chaser 2.23. You want me to hold the mic for you? Yeah, thanks. Um, so you have to get it using the script engine manager. You can request it by the name, for example. So here I just call a new script engine manager, call the engine uh, for CoffeeScript, and then you can pass in a string. For example, uh, I just have print Hello World. When I run that, it um, takes a while to start up, but then it prints Hello World. No surprise so far. Pretty good. So, um, but what I'm actually more interested in is certainly JavaFX, because um, I've spent a lot of time with JavaFX, and I enjoy working with it. So yeah, I have a simple um, a JavaFX program written in CoffeeScript. Um, the code is very similar now. Again, I have to... Imp uh, create a new engine manager, uh, a new, and then, but here instead of passing in a string, I'll pass in a file because um, I want to write my CoffeeScript and CoffeeScript code. Um, right now, using Java is kind of cumbersome at this point because um, right now you have to use the functionality that's provided by Nashorn, um, so here, to extend the application class, the JavaFX application class, we have to call Java extend, um, create a new function, start, and then I create a rectangle, put it into the uh, scene, and show it. So it, um, for people who are familiar with JavaFX, it, it looks very familiar, I think. And when I, no, this was the wrong one. So this is just to show the basic functionality of JavaFX. So you can use Java classes from CoffeeScript, the whole JavaFX engine. And the very last example, I took one of the samples, which are available in NetBeans, and converted that to CoffeeScript. It's the colorful circles demo. Um, People familiar with JavaFX know this demo, I think. And yeah, so implemented in CoffeeScript, we can go through the code in a while. But all of that works already. Cool. So what's your experience with using CoffeeScript versus using Java for, for user interfaces? Well, that's a good question. So I, I still prefer Java, obviously. Um, but when you do web development, you don't really have a choice. I mean, the other choice would be to use JavaScript. And then certainly CoffeeScript is a lot better than um, JavaScript, because JavaScript is really not a good language to code anything except for some simple demos. If you want to code something which is more, um, more complex, you need to use a language like CoffeeScript or TypeScript or something like that. So um, you think, do you think CoffeeScript is close to the old JavaFX script that was part of JavaFX 1.0? Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of similar, and I actually want to get the CoffeeScript engine um, to a point where it's um, very close to the JavaFX script stuff. Right now, it doesn't work because you have to use these uh, Nashorn extensions to work with Java, 
but I want to work on that and ex um, extend the, the script engine so that you can actually type something like, let me just go back. Um, so this is how you would usually do classes in CoffeeScript. Right, this is the CoffeeScript website. Yeah. So here you can see um, in CoffeeScript you have real classes, you have class hierarchies, mm -hmm. and that's actually where I want to get. And instead of having just CoffeeScript classes here, you would be able to use Java classes at this point. And then it would be really straightforward and easy to implement um, things using CoffeeScript. Yeah, okay. So do you need, can you make those changes to the script compiler yourself, or do you have to get those made by somebody in the, in the JVM team? Um, these would actually be changes in the CoffeeScript compiler because I think oh, I have okay. to go into the, I mean, there are several possibilities. I have to experiment with them. But I think the easiest way would actually be to uh, go into the CoffeeScript compiler and um, change the compilation of this code. Um, instead of generating the JavaScript code, it's currently generating to, to generate something else which can take advantage of Java classes. Cool. Okay, that's very nice. And I assume that's going to be part of your presentation later today? Um, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, you, what are you presenting on here at Ordev? Um, so I have two presentations here at Ordev. One is about um, how the CPU works and how that can affect the performance of your programs. So I'll, I'm going to talk about cache misses, branch prediction, and pipelining, um, this kind of low-level stuff. And tomorrow afternoon, I have another session, which is about usability design, where I want to show a couple of techniques that uh, developers can use to increase the usability of their products without actually studying usability for a long time. Something like, you know, for example, low, um, um, low budget usability. Wow. Low budget usability tests and. Um, other techniques that you can use in your in your project starting you know on Monday. Cool. So you're you're quite busy preparing presentations on two very different topics, working on prototypes and CoffeeScript and Nashorn. Right. Yeah. And I'm actually going to start a new project with Carl D. We discussed it at Java One. Um, um, we want to take the JavaFX. Um, API and make it work on DukeScript. There's oh. a sample um, which was done by my old team in Prague, which is using the JavaFX 2.2 API, I think, and had yeah. that working on an old version. I modified that, so now the old JavaFX runtime works on the current DukeScript, but we actually want to get it to a point where we have JavaFX 8 running on um, the current version of DukeScript. Cool. So. That would be really awesome. So for those yeah. for those listeners who don't know what DukeScript is, can you give them the two-minute elevator pitch on what DukeScript is and why they might want to look into it more? Um, I so should be I should have brought my DukeScript T-shirt. I have that in my bag right. from, from Tony. Um, so DukeScript is developed by Tony uh, Appold and Jaroslav Tula. It's a framework to, where you can develop Java applica applications and you use HTML for the user interface. You can integrate JavaScript libraries, um, for example, Bootstrap to do the, to do the um, design. Um, but you can also integrate Java libraries. And then you can actually compile it into Android, an Android application, or um, iOS, um, or desktop, and in the browser. And for me, actually, the, one, the version that compiles it to the browser is the most interesting because there are other efforts going on that bring JavaFX to iOS and Android. But there's currently nothing going on to bring JavaFX into the browser. And yeah, that's so that's I'm a big gap. If you want to run on desktop, you're, you're basically constrained to run within an application rather than the browser, which is what a lot of people get asked to do by their clients. Right, yeah. So we have a lot of clients at um, Canoe. They just want web applications. Um, and we always try to convince them that there are other more possibilities, but it's hard right now. It's just the big hype. So yeah, you have to do web applications most of the time. Cool. So it was great chatting with you. Um, good to see that you're having fun at Canoe. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. am I? Am I welcome to drop by your your new digs if I if I'm on my motorcycle tour later in the spring? Absolutely, I'm happy to welcome you. Cool. <laughs>
All right, so thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the ORDEV yeah. conference. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Bye.